Good afternoon, everyone. Mira san, konnichiwa. Thanks for tuning in Asian Civilization Museum social media account to join us our conversation, Glimpses of Japan from Home. My name is Mayumi Boland. I'm a Japanese event MC, haven't been based in Singapore for the last nine years. And today I'm moderating the, this ACM's Conversations, the quarterly online series of informal discussions on arts-related topics, which has started out during the circuit breaker last year. And this is the second installment for this year, 2021. And uh, it has been a great uh, success. And uh, this particular conversation is aligned with the, our ongoing special exhibition called Life in Edo and Russell Wan in Kyoto, which open on the 16th of April and will run until the 19th of September. So before we begin our conversation, I would like to address that this filming is uh, in accordance with the safe distance and we have taken our masks off just for this filming only. And we're gonna put our masks back on as soon as we finish our discussion. And all the equipments will be sanitized after the event. So today we're live streaming from this family-friendly interactive space right here on the second floor of Asian Civilization Museums where you can take pictures with the digital backgrounds here or you can write your wish and hang it up on the wall, just like people do in Japan. So whether you have been to Japan before or you're planning to visit to Japan as soon as you can, you'll enjoy this conversation as we're gonna talk about Japanese food, Japanese arts, traditions and cultures, and many more. So if you have any comment or question, uh, please scan this QR code to visit Pigeon Hall and leave your comment there. Or if you're watching on a Facebook, you can leave your comment in a comment box below. So today, for this conversation, I'm joined by four guests right here. So uh, we have Mr. Clement Ong, uh, Senior Curator of Asian Export Art and Peranakan at ACM. And uh, next to him is a Mr. Russell Wan, internationally renowned Singaporean photographer. And we have also Ms. Uh, Sujata Ega Migama, Assistant Professor of School of Art, Design, and Media of NTU. And also, last but not least, Ms. Saina Nemoto, Deputy Director of Japan Creative Center, known as JCC. So starting with the Clement, could you tell us more about yourself? Hi, everyone. Thank you, Mayumi, for the introduction. Um, I'm Clement On, the Senior Curator of Asian Export Art and Peranakan at the Asian Civilization Museum. Uh, my research interest primarily falls at uh, looking at cultural and artistic exchanges between uh, Asia and the rest of the world, uh, particularly in Europe and the Americas, looking at cross-cultural works of art, uh, objects that were made uh, in Asia that were meant to be exported uh, to all these other pl different places. Um, then the other interest of, of mine is to look at the spread of uh, Christianity, the Christian faith, uh, into Asia itself. So this is uh, what I do at the museum. Thank you. Thank you, Clement. And Russell? Hi, everyone. Um, I'm a photographer, and I started out in Eugene, Oregon, uh, the western, west coast of the United States shot a lot of track and field and, and sports and moved to Los Angeles and that's where I studied photography in Pasadena at Art Center and uh, delved right into the fashion photography side of it. You know, prim I mean, primarily a fashion photographer to start with mm. for, for quite a long time and of course from fashion photography I moved into portraiture and, and a lot of celebrity portraits and movies and rock stars and the entertainment industry. Wow, yeah. exciting. When did you move back to Singapore? I got back to Singapore about so I think more than two decades ago, but you know, I just use this as a base because mm -hmm. I travel so much. And, and uh, you know, from the Western side in, in America, I, I started shooting a lot of Asian celebrities because of the movies, mm -hmm. like the Jackie Chan and Michelle and Zhang Ziyi. So I, I did a lot of Asian films. Okay. Uh, sh shot a lot of publicity for the Asian films here when I moved back. Exciting career. <laughs> okay. And Sujata? Hi everyone, it's exciting to be here. Um, I'm Sujatha Mingama and I teach Asian Art Histories at the School of Art Design Media at Nanyang Technological University. 
And um, my research interests range from uh, Indian Ocean art histories, where I look at um, uh, cultural encounters between uh, Sri Lanka and South India, um, the Portu Portuguese and Dutch and the British, to looking at um, Singapore's heritages and um, uh, mapping and documenting the hidden shrines of Singapore. Mm. Wow, okay. And uh, Saina Sandoza. Hi, my name is Saina Namoto and I'm the Deputy Director at the Japan Creative Center. So the Japan Creative Center is uh, part of the Embassy of Japan in Singapore, and we try to introduce Japanese culture, technology, and everything um, interesting, hopefully, to the Singaporean audience to you know, better bridge the two countries together. And I've been working uh, at the Japan Foundation for, since 2014, and I was seconded to the embassy in uh, 2018 to Singapore. So I've been here in Singapore for the past three years, and Yes, uh, I love it here. Thank you. You like it here? Me too. <laughs> all right, so the first question to all of you is that what Japanese influences do you see in your lives or work? And share with us, with us uh, if you have any memorable experience in either Edo, which is in now in Tokyo, Kyoto, or here in Singapore. All right, so starting with Clemon. Well, um, it's a, it's, a, it's a tricky question. I mean, I'm a big fan of the game of Go, and I think uh, to a lot of the Chinese communities here will probably rem know of this game as uh, Wei Qi, uh, or in Korea, Baduk. Um, and, um, you know, whenever, I mean, the game originated in China, but uh, it sort of became very popular, and many sort of, you know, developments happened during the Edo period as well uh, in Japan. So some of the rules that we're using were established in Japan in the Edo period. Um, and and uh, when when you know when time allows and, and work permits, uh, I'll often take time uh, away uh, every year to go back to Japan to to attend like summer go camps and 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 go congress event uh, in Japan. And you get to meet with a lot of uh, like-minded people, people who love the game. And and eventually it becomes kind of like an annual gathering thing, which unfortunately in the past uh, two years, I guess you know last year and this year, um, it's not possible again to to have such you know big scale. Event so so I kind of missed it. Do you practice now at home? Uh, yes, yes, not very diligently, but I try, and of course uh, you can do you can still play it online. Mm -hmm. um, so you can still arrange a game with your friend who uh, doesn't mind to play with you online, and and yeah. Okay, well, this is something you can do at home now. <laughs> yes, <laughs> from, yes, unfortunately. Starting from actually <laughs> in, uh, next Monday. <laughs> <laughs> Indeed. Okay, how about you, Russell? Um, one of my most memorable, uh, you know, experiences, obviously, is, is, is in Kyoto. When I first went there in 2008, I was trying to always try to get into the bamboo forest, you know, because it's all, it's all like fenced up and locked up and no one's allowed in there. I was on the periphery looking in to try to get my shot. And I get it, you know, with a lot of difficulty because of the fences, right? So um, not long after that, I managed to get inside to some friends that, that knew the Kyoto Tourism Board because we were doing a proper shoot and I was so happy, you know, just to get step inside. I was running around, taking pictures. I was like this kid in this candy store <laughs> running around, you know, the, the whole bamboo forest is like crouching tiger, right? Yeah. So, uh, yeah, that's definitely one of my, my highlights you know, so far. Yeah, I love bamboo forest as well. Who took yeah. this photo? You're the uh, photographer. And <laughs> there's such a thing as self-timer. <laughs> oh wow! No, no, a friend of mine, a friend of mine, did it for me. Good job, yeah. though. Right? Yeah, exactly, exactly. I framed it, told her what to do. You know, yeah, she hated me for it, but it's okay. But Beautiful. but it worked out, and and uh, I just had to get the shot inside the forest because I've never been in. I mean, yeah, for so yeah, many yeah. years, right? I don't think I've had been there too either. Beautiful. All right, so how about Sujata? My first connection to Japan um, actually uh, began at birth with an object um, when, um, you know, I was born in Sri Lanka, another Indian Ocean island, um, um, formerly known as Ceylon. And um, when um, I was born, my father was actually um, in Japan um, negotiating with the uh, Noritake company to establish factories in um, Sri Lanka. And when they heard that he had just had a baby girl, um, they bought um, uh, a s children's kimono, and you can see on the screen um, me as a little kid um, 
uh, wearing this um, kimono, it was um, sort of my go-to dress up um, uh, item, I guess, because we didn't have Ariel back in the 80s, right? And so uh, this um, kimono actually traveled with us when we moved um, to Singapore uh, nine years ago. And you can see in another photograph of my daughter um, wearing it uh, from a few years ago. And so um, it sort of has become like a family heirloom. Mm -hmm. And um, then my next encounter with Japan was when I was a teenager when my family moved to um, Tokyo. And um, I um, ended up doing my undergraduate uh, degree there. And um, I remember taking my first um, art history class with um, my um, first art history professor who you see on the screen, Marie Therese Barrett, and just um, falling in love with all the temples in Kyoto, um, Nara, and Kamakura. And um, so um, now, and, and she taught a course called East Meets West, and now I kind of teach a similar course called Art in the Age of Colonialism at um, ADM. And this exhibition is just perfect because um, we look at Japanese woodblock prints as well as photography, so I can't wait to sort of um, look at both um, the QA prints and Russell's um, photography um, with my students um, starting in August. That's great. And I love your kimono robes today that you're wearing. It's oh, beautiful. Well, that's in uh, honor of my nephew and niece who I haven't seen now for over a year there in um, Tokyo. And this is something that they gave me when we moved back to Asia nine years ago, the kimono and the um, geta. Beautiful. Yeah. The color suits you very much. Thanks. All right, so sign us on. So I didn't do this question. I know you're from Japan, and you have you spent a couple of years in the U.S. as well. So uh, any Japanese traditions or customs you still practice till today? Okay, so um, yeah, like as a, my job scope, it's you know my job to introduce Japan to you know uh, the people here. So like uh, what I have you know brought as a picture today was of me and my family um, eating the New Year's food um, back maybe like ten years ago. So we, I moved my family moved to America uh, in Ohio um, when I was ten, and I grew up there till I graduated from university. So we sort of grew up abroad, looking at Japan from outside, like maybe kind of like you guys. And so we tried to keep the Japanese tradition, like uh, celebrating the boys' day or the girls' day or the New Year's, where we make the whole dish, the osechi, in the picture on the right. Um, and we all hand make it. So we just learn about the Japanese culture and tradition from yeah, abroad. And in the center is my old dog. <laughs> that was a cute photo. All right, thank you. Uh, so a little bit about me. Uh, I am originally from Kobe, the city of Kobe, as in Kobe beef, not too far from Kyoto. Uh, and then ever since, I actually have lived in Canada, China, and now Singapore for the last uh, nine years. Um, so when it comes to tradition and customs, I haven't really been carrying around with me uh, wherever I lived, uh, especially when I was younger. But uh, now I do really appreciate, you know, the Japanese traditions and customs and uh, especially wearing this kimono like this. So it takes some practice and I have a teacher teaching me step by step because it's just uh, it takes a lot of practice. Um, so I chose this kimono particularly for today because it's uh, the color matches with the Russell's uh, black and white photography at the exhibition. And also, as you can see, this red belt matches with the ACM's uh, logo colors right here. So um, this is my thoughts into this kimono, and I love it. All right, so let's talk about exhibition. Um, again, ACM is running a special exhibition called Life in Edo and Russell Wan in Kyoto, and we're very honored to have Russell uh, and also the curator of Clement as well. So please tell us, so starting with Clement, your favorite pro uh, object from the exhibition and how that resonates with you. Uh, well, again, it's a great pleasure uh, working with Russell on this project, and I think um, this exhibition, uh, Life in Edo, Russell Wong in Kyoto, attempts to explore Japanese arts, culture, and tradition across time and space through two mediums, and one, of course, is uh, woodblock prints, as the one that you see over here, and the other one is contemporary photography, uh, which we'll leave to Russell to talk about. And this is one of my favorite uh, woodblock prints. It's a triptych, so it's a set of three pieces of paper uh, joined together to form a scene. And the title of this print is The Fifth Month, 
uh, by Kunisada II as made down around the 1855. And um, the fifth man, as we know of, uh, is Tango no Seku, uh, which uh, back in the Edo period, it's uh, more commonly known as the Boys Festival. Uh, today, uh, it's also observed as the Children's Day. Uh, and, and here you have, you know, a very interesting scene. Uh, adults and there is a boy over there looking at this large uh, blue and white porcelain uh, fish tank. And, and of course you can see there is a lot of these goldfishes. And if you look closely and then you can actually identify uh, the, the, the breed of the goldfish. I believe there's some ranchus, lion heads, uh, goldfish over there, which, is, which are very much very delightful. Um, what, I mean, as a curator, when I look at some of these prints, uh, often and what picks my interest are some of the objects that are being depicted uh, in this print. And you can see from there is, you know, that, that gorgeous looking uh, fish tank, blue and white uh, porcelain. And then on the left, you also notice that there is uh, kind of a strange device uh, on a sort of a black lacquered stand. And on top of it, uh, you get to see um, six Uchiwa fans being stuck together on, on, on this kind of a rotary motor and you can see that one of the ladies is sort of turning uh, this is almost like a turning fan today but of course they did it manually back then and you can see you know the different decorations uh, used in the Uchiwa which is you know such a brilliant object. Wow I, I saw this picture but I didn't see actually the, the electronic <laughs> type of the fans that's interesting and it's always good to uh, you know have an information from you and it's beautiful that's nice. Um, how about you Russell? You know, for me, uh, you know, I just, having tried to go, to go into the Ochaias, the tea houses, you know, tried for five years. So obviously, when I, I went in, you know, I met my first Geiko or, or Geisha, as everyone calls them. So Geiko is a, the, the Kyoto dialect for Geisha. And it just blew me away because I waited for five years to go into the tea house. And when I, you know, when I was able to photograph her, it was just, it was just really surreal, you know, because... You know, when you wait for five years outside and suddenly you like, let in, it's, it's just, you don't know like, what, what to expect. Um, but it was just, it's really surpassed my whole, uh, you know, my whole, all the thoughts I had and all the, you know, fantasies or dreams that how I was going to shoot this. Um, and of course, Sayaka was the first Geiko I shot. And so I put her in the opening shot of the, the exhibition. And this was when she was serving me, uh, going through a tea ceremony. And, um, and was at the amazing Nashinoki Shrine, uh, right, right by Gosho, the, um, the Kyoto Imperial Palace. Uh, and she was waiting for the water to boil to make my matcha. And I was on the tatami mat for two hours, a bit too long for me. I couldn't walk after that. But she was, she was just cracking up. Um, but it was just for two hours I'm looking at her and doing this like painless, painlessly. But it, it gave me time to, to shoot her and to frame it and try to think of shots. Because I was just on the tatami mat, you know, um, yeah, not being able to move. But, but uh, it's, it's, it's a really quiet moment right yes. there. Yeah. Wow, fantastic. And it's just so amazing that you have access to this secret society. Well, for us, <laughs> I mean, you know, uh, we've never actually been in this kind of society. Yeah, I feel really years. privileged, you know. Yes. That's why I wanted to make it right and to tell the, the right story, you know, and, and not that's twist facts around mm -hmm. and not try to embellish stuff, you know. Because for us photographers, if you don't see it in the frame, it's not there. As for a writer, yeah. you can embellish. Mm -hmm. You can make things up, be more dramatic, right? So, so I wanted to tell and just do things right for them, you know, um, and tell that, that correct and factual story. Mm -hmm. Wow, that's amazing. All right, I hope you will come down to, uh, to see his, you know, uh, black and white photography. It's just amazing. Uh, again, the ACM is running the uh, special exhibition until the 19th of September, so you still have time to come down. All right, so uh, Sujata, what's your favorite from this exhibition? Well, it's hard to choose one because there's such a fantastic array of woodblock prints and, of course, the beautiful photography that um, Russell has taken. But I, as a cat lover and as someone who um, adopted a um, cat three years ago from the SPCA, Kai Kung, um, I would say it's the wall uh, that Clem has dedicated to the uh, photograph, the curable block prints uh, for cats. And I wanted to share two of my favorites um, woodblock prints. The one which has, uh, one bit by um, Hiroshige, um, where you have the white cat looking down on um, rice fields, and then you have the um, 
and Mount Fuji at the back. And often, you know, this is a very famous woodblock print. I mean, you can see that it's on the um, booklet that you can get from the reception downstairs when you come to the ACM to um, take you through the exhibition. And it's one of those um, iconic woodblock prints that you always um, see in a Japanese art history class. Um, and we're often told to sort of look at the presence of the geisha through the accoutrements, or, you know, we end up looking at, the, at Fujisan, but then, you know, there's this cat um, looking down um, on the fields, and it sort of, you know, re really resonates with me um, um, as someone who, um, um, you know, adores cats. And then, of course, there's the monster snow cat, and, I, and you know, that's not the actual name of the woodblock print, but I, I call it that because it kind of reminds me of the moment when I experienced snow for the first time in um, Tokyo in a park in Shinkoenji in the early 1990s. So these are just two of my favorites, but there's so much more in this show. And I believe there's a rotation that there's uh, going to be like a whole rotation where all the prints will be changed, um, I think sometime in July. So I look forward to those as well. Beautiful picture. I haven't seen snow for, uh, in Japan for I think over 15 years now. So this really makes me miss home as well, especially winter time. So how about you, Saina san what's your favorite? So um, I thought these foreign objects in the exhibition from the end of the Edo period were very interesting. Um, like the elephant um, or the Russian on a horse or the French you know, parent, the mom and not son. Um, I thought that they depicted the interest of Japanese people and the trend changing in Japan like there very well and that it just captured the changing world that sort of like, you know, how pictures um, do now. And I thought that, uh, yeah, the, it just connected really well to the exhibition itself of, you know, having the wood book, book prints and, you know, pic uh, photography uh, being the medium to tell people what's going on, what's happening. And yeah, I just really love them. Great, I love this one too. All right, so my favorite, soba noodle stand. And you know, this particular scene really uh, reminds me of a winter time that I, you know, spent uh, when I was younger and I haven't seen the snowfall because every time I go back to Japan, it's either spring or a fall. So I really uh, miss just by looking at this. Um, All right, so the first question, what recommendations do you have for somebody traveling to Kyoto or Tokyo? And to Russell, what similar, uh, sim similarities do you see between Singapore and Kyoto? All right, so let's start with Russell. Um, the first thing I do is research the food, right? right. It's really, and it, then they can, you said something about what's the similarities, the food. You know, because Kyoto has their own, you know, version of, you know, of, of whatever uh, meal you have. Uh, you know, like the tempura is a different version, and the vegetables, the soup, you know, it's cleaner, it's clearer, it's less pungent, you know, less flavors. Um, yeah, so I, I, you know, that's what I do. You know, um, obviously, I, I would also research like the, the places to shoot, um, what it looks like. So I have an idea when I get there to shoot. Because I mean, in my in what, for what I do in my business, research is everything, and uh, if, especially if you haven't been there. So I look at all the photographs that I've ever taken, so I can kind of see through them, have an idea what it kind of looks like, and maybe uh, just have my take on it, do it a bit different, you know, treat it a bit different. Uh, so the research part I really love because already I feel I'm away, right? Mm -hmm. So like, in, and now we're all home in Singapore, you know, like you get on the internet and you just want to go like figure out where you want to go, so. Uh, or come to the ACM and, and get lost in in, in, uh, in Edo and, and Kyoto, so um, yeah, it, it's, it it transports you, and I, I just feel that uh, the research the research research is so important, obviously about food and and where I want to shoot. Nice, yeah. okay. Do you have a local guide uh, when you're in Kyoto, or or any translator um, helping I, you? I not really a guide. Obviously, I would just meet random people, and mm -hmm. I had a friend I met that brought me around, and of course. Uh, uh, I had this friend of mine uh, that just uh, um, 
just would just show me around because he owned a bike shop. His name is Naoki. Um, yeah, and, and just I just go with the flow, especially with the locals, mm. right? They call it Jimoto, right? So um, that's the only way you're going to know the place because mm. it's not like any city in Japan. I feel it doesn't really, uh, because of the architecture, you can't peer in, there's screens, you don't know what's inside. So if you're a foreigner, you feel like kind of cut off a bit because it's, unless it's a Western cafe, you see them sitting outside. Yeah, so... Um, you need a lot of help. You need a lot of help, especially if you want to get to the real, authentic, authentic local places. Just like any city, right? Mm -hmm. If someone came to Singapore, you need a local to bring you around to the coffee, the kopitiams and stuff, and not just stick in a boring mall, you know? Yeah. Oh, that's good. All right. Uh, how about Sujata? Um, I um, used to live in Tokyo, and so um, something that when I was listening to Russell, something that really reminded me of. Um, Reminded me of what's my favorite um, um, uh, agemanchu, where you sort of like eat at uh, the Asakusa Sensoji right. temple. I mean, I know you're supposed to go there to pray to uh, Kanon Sama, but <laughs> but I have to say that I, I also have a, like a secret reason why I go there, and that's to go and have the different types of agemanjus right. on, at, on the Nakamise Dori and of course to shop there as well but that's really something I, I, I miss and um, I would highly recommend um, everyone um, when you get a chance to travel um, to um, Japan to try out the um, akemanju at Asakusa. I see, uh, all right. Yes. How about Asan, uh, as a Japanese perspective? <laughs> hmm. Yeah, like, um, well, personally in Singapore, like, I like the ethnic uh, places. When I, I first came, I, you know, went to, you know, like a typical tourist, Chinatown, Little India, and, you know, the Geylang area for fun. And in a similar sense, um, I tend to recommend people going to, like, uh, in Tokyo, like Nippori, to Ueno area and just to walk around where there are small shops of you know locally owned stores where people do uh, run a lot of you know different shops from like the souvenirs to and, and like, like uh, uh, food you can eat on streets kind of like Asakusa yeah it's it's really fun I, I like really enjoy the localness of that area that's nice. Oh, I miss Japan. I haven't been back for two years, right? Or, well, I mean, almost two years, maybe. All right, so Clement, what's your favorite um, place? Oh, again, it's so hard to pick. I mean, Tokyo has so much to offer. Um, just like back in the Edo period, it is the center of everything. All the trendiest things happens there, fashionable things happen there, and, and today as well. Oh, Kyoto. it's, uh, you know, you always have a soft spot for Kyoto, I think, for most people. And, and to me, it's like Rome. You can go back again and again, and you will see something different. You know, you, something, the place will teach you something else as well. And, and, and that's magical. Uh, and, and, but for me, I think, you know, it's always either Osaka, Kobe, or somewhere in Kyushu, maybe Nagasaki. I think these are the places that, again, calls to me in many ways. You have family there too, right? Yes, I do. My, my wife is from, also from Kobe. Oh, wow. <laughs> okay. Nice. Okay, we're going to talk about Kobe quite a lot after that. <laughs> All right, so uh, given that many people love to travel to Japan right now, and uh, we, as we all are, um, what are the uniquely Japanese experiences that we can encounter here in Singapore? Okay, and uh, I wanted to start with you, Clement, because, um, you know, Japanese individuals living in Singapore are now, uh, I think it's over 36,000 or somewhere around that. So what do you think the Japanese uh, like about Singapore? Well, I think Singapore has a lot to offer to, to the Japanese communities um, for for. I guess, convenient and comfortable reasons in a way that uh, there are many Japanese uh, eateries, restaurants, uh, supermarkets out there that are, uh, are provided that, you know, we can get a lot of all these Japanese products here as well. I mean, uh, I guess, you know, uh, in a way, um, there is also um, the in a way, we have the exhibition here. So this is a good chance for, for whether you're Japanese living in Singapore or Singaporeans who love Japan or ever thought of wanting to go back to Japan. This is also a very nice way in a time like this where travel cannot permit that come and see the exhibition and then get to experience a little bit of Japan in the past and today you know, with us. Yep. That's fantastic. All right. And how about you, Russell? Like, you know, what kind of experience that we can actually have while we're in Singapore, since we can't travel. 
Um, Japanese restaurants. <laughs> It's obvious, right? It's always about food we're for me. We're lucky that we it's, have it's so always, many. It's always about food. When, you, when you're talking to me, it's not about photography. It's always about food. Um, yeah, I, I, I found, you know, I mean, there are amazing Japanese restaurants here. You know, I just had a great ramen from Tokyo a couple of days ago across the street. You know, you can have like a Edo Sushi, one of my favorite places on Circular Road. And uh, the chef is from, uh, he's from um, Tokyo. And uh, dad was a master chef. So, and all the fish is from Skiji Market. So, you can't get better than that, right? Mm. Um, that kind of transports me because, as, as you know, like Japanese interiors are such a, or a, a great sushi restaurant or bar, you walk in, you already feel in Japan. Mm. You know, and, and you know, eight seater, 10 seater, they all speak in Japanese. Uh, and then you just hang out, order. And, and for, that, for that hour, two hours, you're, you're really transported. Mm. And I always tell people that, you know, it's not just about the food. Right, the moment you walk in and that atmosphere kind of engulfs you, it takes over. You you feel it. You you feel it. You can't help but feel that you are in Japan mm -hmm. already. You know, um, so yeah. I mean, uh, that's what I've been doing, and and uh, you know, it's it's food for me. That's great. <laughs> yeah. Well, I'm always curious about the photographer. Like you know, you know whether they like to take a picture of a food every time you like uh, you know have an order <laughs> and it's just ching 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 you know like the yeah. asian do like is that, would you do yeah, that yeah sometimes i do act like a millennial <laughs> you know and 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 yeah yes. I, I do so it's just you know like because i i also have an instagram uh, feed the wong list and i put all my food stuff in oh there. nice I'll, separate I'll from the, the real out. world uh actually the food stuff has more stuff in it the food one um and uh yeah but it it it, 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 it it's very difficult when you're hungry it's very, very difficult when you're hungry because <laughs> you want to just chow down and eat that ramen and you want to like get a good angle for yeah, it. Yeah, don't touch anything. Yeah, <laughs> and sometimes I do forget. You know, I mean, not that I do it all the time, but, but uh, yeah, so, you know, it's, 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 in, uh, it's in the blood. It's okay. a photographer's thing. Yeah. 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 I try to restrict myself. Glad that I asked because <laughs> I was always curious. You know? yeah. <laughs> Great. All right, how about you, Sujata? Well, um... I actually live on the NTU campus, um, and um, I, I feel like whenever I step outside my house, um, I'm sort of like stepping into Japan because I have so many Japanese neighbors, and we sort of all sort of meet at the lobby to say goodbye to our kids at 6.45 a.m. in the morning. So, it, you know, you begin with Ohayo gozaimasu. And, um, and, and um, you know, um, if you just hop on to 179 or 199, um, the buses that come to NTU and you just pop over to Jurong Point, um, you can experience um, uh, lots of Japanese foods. I don't know if Russell has experienced being to Jurong Point and walk down um, Shokutsu Ten, and you get, um, you know, uh, different um, uh, varieties from sushi to um, uh, yakimo um, and to like a wonderful panyasang or a bread shop and they have some of my favorite marongpangs um, there. So, you know, yeah, we can't um, go to Japan, but I think we're really lucky that we have these little sort of um, uh, nooks um, and little sort of uh, places that remind us of Japan. And this really does remind me of some of those nakamisidoris in um, Tokyo that take me back to my um, sort of undergraduate days. Um, so, yeah. Very grateful to not be so uh, far from um, Japan in a way to experience it yes. at Jurong Point. Yeah, that's right. We're so lucky to have all these Japanese restaurants and supermarkets uh, and, and department stores as well. So, you know, as a Japanese living in Singapore, I really feel like, you know, we're in Japan, especially wearing kimono like this and then going to Japanese restaurants and people greet, yasaimase, you know. So it's a really nice feeling. Uh, how about you, Sinasan? So we both haven't gone back to Japan for a while. And uh, what can we do to feel our home uh, in Singapore? Okay, so um, yeah, first of all, like like you guys said, the the amount of Japanese things you can find in Singapore is just amazing, and that it just really I think it just shows how open Singapore is to another country's um, culture, and so um, this is this picture particularly is from uh, 2019 our Japanese uh, 20, yeah 2019 Japanese Film Festival before pre-COVID. And so you could see that uh, we brought, you know, we filled up the entire uh, cinema seat and uh, with 400 people and we just flew uh, directors from Japan to open a Japanese film festival. 
And um, so the poster in, in the, on the right is from uh, our festival that happened in 2020, the film festival. And that one was smaller in scale because it happened after COVID. But so we just try to, uh, as JCC, curate a lot of uh, Japan-related events to happen here in Singapore so that um, not just food, but culturally also, we can you know, try to uh, provide um, some interesting points that people can relate back to Japan right here. And we're feeling the importance of doing things within the country, not to just you know, have people go, but to have things happen here so that in the times when travel is difficult, uh, people can still find out and learn about new things happening in Japan. And the next picture, uh, we have the uh, exhibition uh, on Ikebana that happened um, in February. So we tried to incorporate some uh, AR uh, component to the exhibition so that uh, you, could, you can kind of see that this picture on the left is taken with the augmented reality um, app that, so on top of the actual Ikebana, you can see you know, things growing from the ground um, that, uh, yeah, um, that it was just like a physical and online component combined. But yeah, we try to bring out, uh, bring in all these different um, events throughout the year. So please look out for the next one coming up. Uh, yeah. Great. So you brought Japan to Singapore. And uh, we have Clement also bringing Singapore to Japan. So talk about uh, Pranakan show that you did in, uh, in Tokyo. Tell us. Well, I mean, that's, uh, that's, that's the thing, right? I mean, we, we say that there are many Singaporeans, or at least there are many Singaporeans that I know of that love Japan for, for different reasons. And I think that, you know, likewise, uh, there are many Japanese as well who really appreciate uh, Singapore's diversity, the, our sort of hybridity in terms of our cuisine as well. So food is another thing. And I think when it comes to talk about hybridities in terms of culture, um, <clears throat> our many Peranakan communities is kind of like a, a topic of interest, I think. We see it a lot in the um, uh, Japanese visitors uh, coming to our sister museum, the Peranakan Museum. And in fact, there was so much interest that we managed to send two exhibitions. I didn't do that. My, uh, it was uh, guest curated by uh, Mr. Peter Lee, uh, working together with our museum's curators. And, and, and these are some of the, our national collection that was sent uh, to Japan, I think two venues, uh, in Fukuoka and in Tokyo uh, in 2016. Uh, and, and they were very much well received uh, looking at, you know, all this uh, sarong kabaya, the, the, the very traditional uh, way of uh, eating uh, certain Peranakan dishes in ceramic wares that are specially commissioned uh, for the communities. That's nice. I love Peranakan culture as well. And I think a lot of Japanese tourists, you know, who are coming to visit in Singapore, it's everyone's itinerary going to a Peranakan Museum and also um, buy you know, a couple of ceramics here and there because it's, it's beautiful and colorful. All right, so uh, let's take a look at another comment or questions if we have. All right, so please tell me more about the name Utagawa, which appears so often with the a picture. Thank you. All right, and five votes. So, um, Clement, would you like to start? Uh, sure. Um, Utagawa School or clan is actually uh, a name uh, of a line of ukiyo-e artists. And um, basically, imagine that they are one big school, uh, started with a teacher, and eventually he will accept a lot of students who work under him. And uh, for most of these students who manage to uh, impress or, or make his sort of own mark in designing prints, ukiyo-e prints, uh, will get the recognition. And, and by that time, um, the, the teacher will pass on the, the sort of uh, school name uh, to the, the, the pupil. So he can address himself as Utagawa, uh, Utamaro, Utagawa, uh, so and so. And, 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 and it's an, in a way, it's also, if you imagine, it's not just to, to, to state very clear your lineage, of you know, where you have uh, mastered your skill, but it's also some kind of a branding and advertisement that you are from the illustrious Utagawa clan, and which means that there must be some kind of a standard in the works that you produced. Uh, so you know, there are many ways that you can see uh, in, in, in sort of the names just like that. 
That's interesting. I was wondering about that too. So that's that's a good to know. All right. Should we shoot another question if you have? Okay. To Russell, which photographer do you trust to take your portrait, or uh, do you take self portraits by setting it up yourself? Thanks. I think we we talked about that too. All right. Let's ask again. Um, which photographer do I trust? They all did. <laughs> <laughs> They, they all did. Richard Avedon, Helmut Newton, Irving Penn. These, these are the three pillars of like, photographers that I've always looked up to because they're all amazing fashion and portrait photographers. And that's what I studied uh, on my own and wanted to have careers similar to them, you know. Um, not just doing commercial work um, like magazines and fashion magazines, but also moving to find artwork to, to, to create images that people will collect. Like the serious uh, photographer, I mean, ser serious art collectors would, would want to buy and collect. Um, yeah, mm -hmm. it's too bad, but uh, yeah, my standards are pretty high. <laughs> 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 I, the, the self the self portrait thing, it's 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 kind of tough. I mean, I, I I do feel a bit uncomfortable shooting myself. Right, yeah. I know, you know, I I need to get with the program because they tell me that if you do that for Instagram, you get more followers. So yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm going to start. I'm like so bad at selfies, you have no idea. <laughs> you know, um, I was hit the wrong button, it's crooked, you know, but I, I, yeah, I got to get with the program and try to get real trendy like everyone else. Fantastic. <laughs> and who took your photo? I mean, you have official photos uh, for this exhibition yeah, uh, too, right? Yeah, my assistant. Your assistant. Yeah, wow, so, great yeah, job. My, my assistant, he helps me a lot. Um, and uh, yeah, so I mean, I don't even get shot like, I, I think the last time I did it was like 15 years ago, I think. Oh, wow. Yeah, so we're always behind the camera. And uh, I guess the uncomfortable part would be if someone shoots you, the first thing that goes through your mind is, is he going to make me look okay? Is like, <laughs> you're looking is at his life. Okay? Yeah, yeah, exactly. So I'm like, okay, I'm like critiquing it. I go, no, 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 don't put it there. <laughs> you know, um, so, you know, just like anything, right? It's just, uh, but you got to be diplomatic about it. And like, yeah, I think it needs to move over there. I think it's a bit... You know, but but yeah, it's you can't help it. You can't help it, right? Yeah. So you're happy so with the with the photos that you have taken. Yeah, of course. Yeah. You know. Excellent. Yeah. So because I moved the light myself. <laughs> <laughs> Just kidding. <laughs> Fantastic. All right. Um, do we have time for another question? Okay, let's do it. How has your work been impacted by the COVID nineteen pandemic? Hmm. All right. So can we start with Sinasan? Yeah, um, JCC has been impacted pretty heavily. Um, it's uh, we used to have a lot of people visit from Japan to you know bring things new things into Singapore and our events. So now we've shifted more towards online. But um, yeah, um, it's 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 been tough, but uh, we've learned new things through it. So um, yeah, that's that's how it is. Sorry. Mm. And how about you, Sujata, uh, working in a NTU? Yeah, I mean, I, um, I think that question sort of takes me back to last year when we suddenly had to go online because I usually have a class of 150, 200 students um, in from um, January to May. And so it, uh, you know, we suddenly had to um, switch completely to online. And uh, But this um, semester, we've been really lucky. We've been able to do hybrid classes where... I have about um, 15 in a very large hall where we can sit about 400 and the rest can be online. So we're very um, grateful to be able to do that, to have sort of that face-to-face -face, um, um, teaching experience, but then also combine that with online um, teaching as well. So, yeah. Good. All right. And De Clement? Well, first of all, I think we're all grateful that we still get to do what we love to do and mm -hmm. we still all have our jobs. Yes. Um, and, and I'm also very grateful that, you know, this exhibition still managed to open uh, before, you know, all this happened. But it's, it's difficult, I, I guess, difficult for everyone uh, during this period, um, sort of jostling we with... Before, right? we, we planned this before, yeah. absolutely. And, uh, and, and, and we, we talk about, you know, what are the possible scenarios. And I think, you know, here we really have to thank, you know, JCC, the Embassy of Japan and um, Kobe Shimbun, our co-organizer, for very uh, willing to take a leap of faith with us to, to send us uh, these uh, prints um, that are 
not accompanied by any sort of career from their side. So this, this, is, this is really a, a true sort of, you know, uh, um, how shall I put it, uh, test of, you know, uh, faith and, and, and they are sort of, you know, comfortable with us for, for being able to still to do and deliver a good exhibition out of it. And uh, it's tough because uh, in the museums, everything also, we shifted very much to the virtual domain. A lot of uh, online lectures and then even like talks like this, where all of us are being seated here. Uh, it's not just us, but what people don't see on the screen over here are a team of people at the back, you know, cameraman, you know, all the audio technicians, our programs, edu staff, who also, you know, very, uh, uh, have been very hardworking in, in trying to get this uh, available and up online. So, yeah. Yes, yes, you are very lucky to, uh, to have this, you know, online series today, um, you know, on live. And this will be probably the last time, like, you know, uh, for viewers to see us, five of us sitting here. And, uh, you know, so we're very lucky to have this session today. And Russell, as a photographer, how about you? How it, has it um, impacted? I just sit in my room and cry. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> I mean, all of us had no idea what was happening, right? So I'm sitting around here, and, and, um, and as a photographer, I can't do the online thing. It's tough. I can't shoot online. and I mean, I miss the interaction, obviously. I miss the travel, obviously, although I did sneak out during the pandemic. And, and that when, when there was this window, um, I managed to get, get to, to Kyoto before everything was closed. But I had to do that to, to get uh, that amazing shot you see. I mean, the, the snow shot. Right uh, of the King Kakuji, um, but came back the moment I knew what things were going to happen and stuff's going to change. Then I, I just rushed back. Um, but but in Singapore, you know what I did was I told myself, you know, like you can lock me up, but you, you can't lock a, you can't lock my mind up. Right, imagination is a powerful thing. Right. You know, um, so I just came up with my own assignments, uh, and and I went to shoot an empty street every night. So if you see a guy lurking around your neighborhood. <laughs> Yeah, I was cycling, I was cycling, had my little camera, I'll go, you know, my camera, go tap out some food or something, and, and I just told myself, just one image a day keeps me really happy. So that's what, that's what I did, I created the series, you know, of empty streets. Yeah, it's kind of eerie, you know, but, you know, it, it will never happen again, hopefully. Um, and, uh, yeah, your, your mind keeps working on what, what more can you do, right? right? In your room, with a computer. And I mean, uh, it's, it's amazing what it can come up with. Yep. Like I've started doing, you know, I learned how to live stream, which I said, whoa, I can live stream now because my friends are doing it. Um, yeah, so you do, I mean, and I promised myself that I was going to learn something new every week, you know, or every day. I try to learn something new, stuff I've never done in my life. Um, yeah, so that kind of got, got me going. Because once you're on that schedule and that routine, I think you feel a lot better, right? Because I think the fear of the unknown, it creates anxiety. But you can kind of like hop over that hurdle and just, just take control over it. And that's what I'm trying to do. Yeah. Uh, um, yeah, hopefully it worked, you know, so. That's, yeah, that's a great, um, you know, wisdom for coming from you. I think it was, you know, uh, use your imagination and creations, you know, because it's not going to lock them, you know. And lock my mind. Yeah, that's a, that's a good word. All right. Okay, so Japan and Singapore is celebrating the 50th. Uh, 55th anniversary of our diplomatic relations this year and I'd like to ask all of you as a last question so what do you hope to see more of uh, between the two countries Japan and Singapore so uh, I'd like to start with the Clement well um, I guess depending on how the situation sort of proceeds but uh, I mean, we shouldn't also, we should also see this as opportunities for trying out different uh, ways of uh, doing all these exchanges of uh, well, bicultural programs. And, and this is not just talking about, you know, museums, exhibitions, but actually beyond that, uh, in terms of cultural performances, in terms of musical performances, uh, things that we could not uh, uh, sit in on the live performance anymore, but is there a way that we can still, you know, make some of these uh, uh, bicultural exchanges happen. So, so I do you know, look forward for more creative ways in, in, in feeling connected between Singapore and Japan and across all these different arts and cultural industries and in the, um, um, institutions. And uh, Russell? Um, you know, obviously, you know, the cross-cultural, you know, I think it's important for everyone. Um, not about the food, 
although it's important, because <laughs> Singapore is based on a cross-cultural food, mm -hmm. right? Peranakan, the Malays, the Indonesians, the Chinese, uh, I mean, we're built on it, right? We're built on it. This country is built on it. Um, so that's obviously important, and but also I think more importantly is just mainly to understand. You know, I think when you uh, when you you learn about other cultures, you understand more. When you understand more, you know, it's more it's going to be a more pleasant place to live in. The world's going to be more pleasant. It's always this miscommunication, and you don't understand, and that's so weird, right? You always hear that. You know, when people travel, oh, that's so strange. It's not strange. It's just different. It's a different way of doing things. There's no one way to skin a cat, like they say. You know, uh, but. Um, yeah, so that's, 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 I find that's the most important takeaway mm. in terms of just, oh, not just, you know, learning a new language, but the whole key of it to me. If, if I understand you better, I can deal with you better. I'm, I'd be more sensitive. And you can understand me better if you understand what I, where I'm coming from. Mm -hmm. You know, because communication is key. Right? Communication is key and, and the misunderstandings happen all the time when, when two cultures collide, so to speak. You know, so I, I feel that's, that, that's the most important. And how about you, Sujata? Well, I too like um, Clem would, um, and Russell would like to see more sort of like collaboration and understanding. And I'm thinking more at the university level, like um, student to student, or um, the faculties um, collaborating. I mean, I'm thinking of my own students at the um, art school. They're so inspired by um, Japanese manga, anime. Uh, design and art, and I mean, if you can, you can see it in their artworks, um, and they're all studying Japanese, doing Japanese minors on the side, and I'm thinking back to sort of like this new um, FYP final year project show that just opened at Gilman Barracks, the ADM's um, this year's show, and I'm thinking of the installation on the cooking shoe, inspired by the cooking shoe. Um, and it's, so it's, when I think of um, you know, the students um, engaging so deeply with um, Japanese culture, it would be wonderful to sort of explore um, possibilities of sort of student collaborations or, or even faculties collaborating, even on online, it, it's possible. You know? mm -hmm. We've had to learn new skills um, to survive. So, yeah, so that's what I'm thinking. And for Sinus and as, uh, for yourself or for JCC uh, uh, perspective? Yeah, for I mean, for JCC, uh, we just like to see more of you in Singapore. Like, uh, we are just th so thankful to have a Singaporean who's so deeply in interested and knowledgeable about Japan here. So even despite you know, in this exhibition, when the wood block prints couldn't be brought by the curators from the Japan side, you know, they trusted you know Clement and his team to take the utmost care of it. And like they could just really see how knowledgeable of Ukiyo they were, and and Russell's um, photography, like um, you know more about Kyoto than most Japanese people do, and that's that's just you know really amazing. And we try to you know, want to keep uh, trying to you know provide the basic uh, entry point for Singaporeans to you know get more interested about Japan here. But you know they really, and I hope that more people take. Uh, you know, uh, jump into Japanese culture more so, you know, their interest just digs deeper and deeper that, you know, like it provides the, the bridge between the two. And also, I really wish that more Japanese people would, you know, learn more about Singapore and that more things, Singaporean things can happen in Japan so that, you know, the bilateral relations, you know, grow stronger. I really hope to see that happening. I do hope that too, as well. So thank you so much to all the panels for uh, sharing your thoughts and ideas and, and, and experiences as well. It was a really, really fun uh, session today. So I think this is the end of a conversation. May, and maybe if you have a mask on, we can put our mask back on. Um, so this is the end of a conversation. And I'm going to do as well uh, as soon as I finish this conversation. All right, so everyone who's watching, thanks for tuning in Asian Civilization Museum's social media channel and our conversation, Glimpses of Japan from Home. The special exhibition will be running until the 19th of September, so please come down to ACM, and you might catch Russell or Clement uh, at the exhibition, so you can talk to them uh, with the masks on. <laughs> and we would appreciate if you could uh, give us your feedback by scanning this QR code. Right, this QR code and uh, filling out the form to share your thoughts and idea about this session. 
And this live stream video will continue to be available on ACM's uh, social media, uh, YouTube channels, and uh, Facebook as well. So you can watch it again and share it with your friends and family if you like. And there will be more sessions like this in 2021. I really hope so. So please check out ACM's social media accounts for latest updates. So thank you very much for all of you. And thank you for all the viewers to watching us. Um, have a great weekend. And, uh, 皆さんありがとうございました. さようなら.